Good morning. It's good to connect with you here on this Wednesday morning for our midweek devotionals. I'm actually recording this on Tuesday, and this morning as I'm recording, it's very snowy outside, very very January-like, uh, winter-like outside my window. I know the season of, of winter can be tough for many of us uh, with the short days, the cold weather, uh, spending more time indoors. And, and when we do have to go outside, we have to bundle up and you know prepare for the weather. However, I'm thankful for the hope that we have in God that carries us through uh, these short days and, and knowing that we can still connect, that we can use uh, technology and all the, the different tools that we have uh, uh, with us to connect with one another and stay grounded in God's hope. And today, with the snowy weather, I'm especially thankful for all who are working outside, all who um, work hard to make our lives possible, and uh, I'm especially mindful of our highway workers who are out driving plows and keeping our roads safe, and all of our first responders. Thankful uh, for all those folks today who give of themselves, who take time away from their family and friends so uh, we can be safe and cared for. So today, I especially give thanks for our highway workers and our first responders. Well, this morning, we'll follow our typical pattern uh, uh, for our midweek devotional, where I'll open in prayer, and then we'll read a scripture, reflect on that, and then close in prayer. So I invite you to pray with me. Our opening prayer today is from the Book of Common Prayer. So let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 111. It's been a while since I've read from the Psalms for our Wednesday morning, uh, but this Psalm I uh, find to be meaningful. So I invite you to hear these words, uh, starting there at verse 1 of Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I was looking at this psalm, the verse that stood out to me is pretty uh, near the beginning, uh, verse 2, is, Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. I'll be honest, I'm a bit of a nerd. You probably have figured that out. I love learning. I love learning how uh, you know, things in our world uh, connect and interact. I love learning how, um, really, how our natural world uh you know, is in those one ecosystem and all the ways and the parts, the different animals, different plants, uh, how we as people interact with, with nature. And I, I find that study, you know, of God's creation to be so important, especially as a people of faith. I believe we can be faithful in learning and studying the world, but I also believe we can be faithful when we study uh, other subjects as well, that when we study other things, uh, you know, the humanities, uh, you know, the arts, I mean, there's so many, uh, so many things in which we are blessed to be able to study and to learn, to create uh, in our world. And I also reminded how important it is to study with our faith, to spend time learning about our faith, uh, to spend time reading uh, scripture, reading the Bible, to learning uh, about theology, reading about theologians, uh, and even learning about uh, our history 
as a faith, learning Christian history, especially uh, parts of history we may have uh, not had as much exposure to, such as uh, what took place, you know, in the, the time of the Desert Fathers, uh, you know, early uh, writers uh, and um, leaders of the faith who spent time out in the desert, uh, who felt they needed to be there so they could learn and grow and teach others uh, through the Middle Ages and through the Reformation and to really the Enlightenment to today. All these aspects and time periods of history that influenced our faith. I believe as we learn and grow, we can be faithful. We can be faithful in our questions. We can be faithful in our understanding. So I would encourage you all, wherever you find yourself, whatever you are interested in, to grow in that understanding and reflect how our faith in Christ, how our faith in God that is shaped by the Holy Spirit can connect with whatever you are studying. How can you live out your faith in your studies? How can you live out your faith in your occupation while you're at school, wherever you find yourself? I believe we can share our faith, we can connect with our faith, and we can bless others with the hope that we have in Christ wherever we find ourselves, however we study, and whatever we are studying. All that we learn, all that we use, all that we are good stewards of, with all that's been entrusted to us, can be used to build up God's kingdom. So let us be faithful in our study, let us be faithful in our growth, and most of all, in whatever we find ourselves doing, may we grow closer to our God, closer to Christ, and be shaped by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, to close today, I invite to take a moment to be in our regular pattern of prayer. I will uh, follow the pattern prayer that we do on Sunday mornings at Wiley and McClave, where we spend a moment in silent prayer, and then we pray together and close in the Lord's Prayer. I will use the structure of prayer that we do here on Wednesday mornings that kind of cover, cover a lot of things, cover a lot of parts of our lives. So I invite to take a moment to be in prayer, to lift up what's in our hearts and our minds, and then we will pray together. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, 
you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. Then among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed. Where true joys are to be found, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And may we pray, as Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, go forth into your day knowing the hope that comes from our God. And go forth knowing that wherever we are studying, wherever we are working, wherever we find ourselves, we can learn and grow and use all that to grow in our faith and in our understanding of God. So go forth. Uh, our cat is, my cat here is saying uh, uh, our time together is concluding <laughs> as he walks past. Oh, let me move him here. So go forth and know that God is with you. Go in peace. Amen.